What up, everyone? I'm Rich Mays Lopez. I'm Matt Welty. And this is Full Size Run Show, the absolute only sneaker show that you need in your life. Today, we are joined by a special co host, Matt yeah. Welty, probably the most notorious sneaker writer in the game. Would you accept that title? Uh, I would give that to Russ Benson. Okay, you give it to Russ Benson. Also, shout out to Gary Warnett, too. First up, our new section, Matt Welty, please kick us off. So the first thing we need to talk about is John Mayer's unofficial collab with Nike yes. on the Air Max 90. Yes. Uh, John Mayer, notorious sneakerhead, yes. notorious tastemaker, yes. very high level, always been into Visvum. He had a yeah. blog back on Hun Honey, mm -hmm. however you pronounce it, mm -hmm. back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, you see him in Air Maxes, all that. Now you see him flexing in Visvum, yeah. Rolex collection, all of that. Yeah. He decided to go out on his own and make these sort of like Dave White, Neon. Sure. Air Max 95, sort of colorway Air Max 90s. He is selling them himself. Yeah. He is not doing it with Nike. Yeah, I, I, I think it's genius, right? So what he's doing is he, he basically designed all these Air Max 90s on an ID. He waited until the options went out or were discontinued, because you yeah. know the options always are fresh. He, he bought all the pairs that he could buy, and now he's flipping them himself. Yeah. I mean, you could have made this joint on Nike on Nike ID a couple months ago, yeah. but he's slapping his name on it and he's selling it himself. I think it's genius. He's not your typical young hype beast yeah. rapper prototype. Most yeah. people don't expect acoustic guitarist to be the to be the dude. And but I wonder if Nike would have given him his own collaboration to begin with. I don't think so. You don't think so? No, I don't think so. Not no no shots to John. I just think that they're looking a lot younger. Sure. A lot more urban. Yeah, more hip hop. Yep. Um, John Mayer, he's not really a fashion designer. He doesn't fit, which can segment into the next one, but he doesn't really fit like the Virgil Abloh yeah. sort of Kanye sort of affiliation, which the kids are looking for nowadays. Yeah. I think John Mayer is just cool and we like it, especially yeah. as older guys. You well, know, speak for yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, but that brings us, like you said, to our next things. In addition to John Mayer, we saw Travis Scott another uh, sneaker from Off-White's Virgil Abloh, and The Weeknd's collaboration was also announced. Yes, uh, Travis, out of nowhere, he kind of got his own Jordan sneaker. Yeah, so he got his own Trunner LX the under, under the Cactus Jack, yeah. uh, multicolored joint, new Presto from Off-White, which is part of their massive collaboration. Yes. And then The Weeknd. So my question to you, you and I have been in this game a long time. What do you think because we both come from a, from a time when sports, when athletes drove the conversation. Or, or I think, uh, you know, athletes, but also, you know, you saw 10 years ago where you had, you know, Pharrell had his own shoe. Sure, but that was used way before his time. Nowadays, it's like anyone big yes. is getting a shoe. Yeah. They're so bigger as than a blocks. person who's authentic to sneaker culture as you are, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, not, it's not for me. Gotcha. Um, I think some of the shoes are really good. I think some of the shoes are really good. That takes us to one of my, I guess, deeper sneaker career articles that has basically haunted me and plagued me for probably at least 10 years now. And that is the Gatorade Sixes. <laughs> so this year, we finally have been able to see the rumored Gatorade 6, which is part of a Be Like Mike pack. All this is rumored, by the way. What I'm calling it Gatorade 6 is Be Like Mike. This is all stuff that's just been generated from the community. This whole idea of the Gatorade 6s existing first surfaced at least 10 years ago. And it was a huge deal when it hit the early blogs, yeah. uh, the early sneaker blogs, chomping at the bit for what, this. What it was gonna be. For, right, for this Gatorade 6. The fact that this may or may not drop, although we have seen what it actually looks like now, is amazing to me because it brings closure. So let so, me ask you a question though, Gatorade 6s versus the Cactus Jack Trunner, which one is selling out? I think I, I it sounds stupid, and this, this trust me on <laughs> this. This is why I'm asking you. I know this sounds stupid, and you never would have said this three years ago. Yeah. Cactus Jack Trunner is a hotter shoe than the Gatorade Six right now. And again, this is. <laughs> Am I, you're not lying. You're not. I'm lying. not. No. You're not lying. You're not lying. I'm happy that the sneaker's finally coming out, so I don't have to see it anymore. Period. Next, moving on. Uh, Welty, talk to me about Yeezys. Everyone wants Yeezys. Kanye said everyone's going to get Yeezys, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, not everyone has been able to get Yeezys, but 
really cool story, kind of heart touching. Tyler uh, Wesley, who's a quadriplegic, um, he had a you know a car accident, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he really wanted a pair of Yeezys. You know, yeah. hasn't hasn't gotten his Yeezys. Who doesn't? Kanye sent him a yes. pair of cream white Yeezys yes. with a handwritten note that. Fire. We want to read it. He said, Tyler, you are an inspiration. You show the world anything is possible. Thank you for sharing your journey. Signed, Kanye West. Dope. Um, it's just good to see things like this happen. We hear about so much violence based around shoes and, yeah. and all of that. Kanye kind of seems like he's kind of in this castle by himself where yeah. he's kind of like, he doesn't really talk to anyone. Or know what's going on in the world. Yeah. yeah. He's like in his own world, but Kanye, you know, responded to this kid, Tyler wanted the shoes, yep. sent him a pair. I give, him, I give him a lot of respect for that, you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. In addition to the Kanye blessing, two new Yeezy samples uh, yes. leaked onto the internet yeah. earlier this week. There's like a bluish pair. Midnight, and like, midnight blue. Yeah, and like an olive-ish pair, or is it like? Oh, Almost like a wheat. Like a, okay, let's say a wheat. Uh, according to the good people at Yeezy Mafia, who are friends of the program here at Soul Collector, these two samples will never release. Well, Dave, you are a very big Adidas fan, but more of their archive stuff. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I understand that brands have to grow and they have to do different things. And I'm not, I'm not mad at that at all. Adidas is a true sportswear company that's yes. rooted in creating tomorrow. Question and to you is, do you care? I don't. You I'm, don't care? No, I'm not a guy who goes for Yeezys. And I mean, I'll be honest about that. I mean, for this, it's like the people who are going after this stuff aren't the reason why I like the brand. Gotcha. So I necessarily don't want to be affiliated with them. Understand. In my opinion, I am I am personally completely over the Yeezy Boost 350, at least at this point. Yeah, completely it, over it. Need something new. I want the next power phase. I want a triple black power phase. I want a Yeezy runner. I want something different. I also don't want any more shoes that look like socks. Let's be real. Oh yeah, we can be over that too. Yeah. So, Matthew J. Welty, you are the content lead at uh, Complex Sneakers. Yes. Complex Sneakers published an article this week by way of the OG John Gotti. And the head was something along the lines of, is Big Baller brand a big marketing scheme? The only reason I'm mentioning this is because Lonzo Ball and Big Baller brand somehow didn't make news this week, but we have to talk about them. Yeah, so let's, let's get let's get into it. So, so let's talk about over them. the past few weeks, you know, everyone's been talking about Lonzo Ball and, you know, he how he wore Adidas. Yes. He wore he wore, oh, he wore every Jordan. He, yep. wore, he wore every brand. He even wore Sandal Boys. Shout Did out he to, wear Sandal Boys? Shout, shout out to Free Relations. He wore he wore uh, Sandal Boys slides on the. On, wow! Yeah. I didn't even know that. He you are wear, a, you are a big baller brand he, truther. He didn't wear the he didn't wear the the big the two hundred twenty dollars slides. Wow! He wore, okay. those, he wore the Sandal Boys. And I've been personally a big critic of. Of shame on you. Yeah, of uh, Lavar Ball. Mm. Not well, if Lonzo. I, knew that, I wouldn't not have Lonzo, you here today. Not Lonzo. Yeah, come on, man. Uh, not Lonzo. Okay. I, I don't. I don't have an issue with him. Lavar. I've always thought he. I understand you need to put. You need to look out for your own and mm -hmm. do all that stuff. I just think that like coming from being someone's part of this footwear industry, I just think it's too much, man. Like, okay. come on, like. So is it, in your opinion, a marketing scheme? Yes. It is. He's not, I don't think, I mean, maybe it is. Maybe, like, you know, he can prove me wrong. But I don't think Big Baller Brand was ever meant to be... A real thing. A real thing. I think he created it to build up hype around Lonzo. But with that said, is it genius? It is. It's okay, very, it's very smart. It's very smart. We agree smart. on one thing. But the thing is, is that, like, I don't think, you know, obviously, I don't know if he doesn't realize it or not, but at the same time, it's like, yo... Signature basketball athletes mm -hmm. are not a premium in the sneaker industry anymore. We just, we just said that. Yeah. As, as we're saying, so yeah. it's like, why do you think you're going to get a billion dollars? If like, if, Le if they, Nike can't sell LeBrons, yeah. you know, how are you going to- But at the same time though, LeVar, I'm sorry, LeVar. Yes, LeVar Ball, everything. But Lonzo Ball, he, his, he's shown and proved at the, at the Summer League. No, I'm not saying he can't play basketball. Okay. That, that's not even the discussion. But I'm, he was the draw at the Summer League. No, for he sure. He was selling out Summer League arenas, guy. No one cares about Summer League basketball. No, I get you. He made people care about something that nobody cares about. No, I'm not I saying he's you. LeBron, and I understand your point. But this is what I want to say, right? Is, is Big Baller Brand a marketing scheme? I don't know. If it is, it's genius. I originally thought, and here's a conspiracy theory for you, that Nike was behind Big Baller Brand. That they were using Big Baller Brand as an affront to draw up 
mark, you know, to draw up a uh, promotion and to draw up promotion and hype around Lonzo Ball and then eventually unveil him being a Nike athlete. That would have been fucking genius. That one's free. That's like, so, uh, that's like uh, what's his name? Uh, Leroy, Leroy Smith. Leroy Smith, right. It's like a fake story. Yeah. Anyway, whether or not it's a marketing scheme, I don't know, nor do I care. I think it's genius. Uh, I, again, I love LeVar Ball. I love Lonzo Ball. I hope Lonzo Ball bangs on everyone this year in his big baller brand sneakers. And to, to my point, again, to get to my point, is Lonzo Ball is a hooper. That's very obvious, yeah. right? But because of LeVar Ball, he's been able to ascend himself into popular culture very quickly yeah. and even more than current NBA players, right? Big triple Bs is a thing. Right? Whether you like it or not, you can laugh it off. Even though, even though Lavar says, I got a tattered, yo, I got a tattered across the belly. Yo, it's big bees for life. It, according, according to his interview with Joe LaPuma, the OG, yeah. uh, making a sneaker isn't that hard. It's just rubber and glue. Man. That's it. But it costs five hundred dollars. <laughs> Shout out to Lonzo Ball, Lavar Ball, forever. Our copper drop this week. Uh, Wealthy, what are you copying this weekend? Uh, I like the newest uh, uh, Adidas sneaker exchange shoes. Yep. The A Life. New York City, yep. your, one of your OG Shout shops. Shout out to A-Life. What I thought was cool about this, usually with this you'll see like a newer hype shoe yeah. versus an older shoe. Like a boost jump off. Yeah, yeah. but they did a Stan Smith and a Gazelle. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Gazelles are kind of- That gets you hot and bothered, right? What? That gets you hot and bothered. No, I think Gazelles are like, they're not. I'm not saying they're dead, but they've just done so much with it sure. that it's kind of like, what more are you going to do with the Gazelle? Yep. I think these are dope. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna argue with them. Th and they have the the USA and the in the, the French flag and the French flags. Just yeah. the color blocking. It's uh, there's nothing. I was expecting this to have some weird prime knit on it or something. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't have a boost. Doesn't have a boost sole. Yeah. It's just a regular good shoe. So my I, I cop of the week is the white black Nike Flyknit trainer. I'm obviously wearing a pair right now. These are the OGs, uh, back from 2012. I love this sneaker. I love this sneaker. Whether or not Kanye West rocked this sneaker, I couldn't care less. Not I was so. day one, day one on this sneaker, okay? I wanna make that known. I rocked it before Ye, I rocked it before all the kids out there that are trying to cop it now. I was day one, and you can tell because my joints have the black collar on them. The joints that are dropping retro do not have the black collar on them. That's how you know it's official tissue day one. But. I'll go back to cop these again just because I need more pairs. It's a beautiful sneaker. Yeah, it goes yeah. with anything. It looks good on foot. It's comfortable, easy to wear. What are you dropping this week, Wilty? Uh, five, six, seven years ago, this wouldn't have been a cop for me, but this would have it been would a, have been a cop. Wouldn't have wouldn't been have. a cop, but it would have been a collab that I thought was you cool. You were excited about. Okay. Right now, I will say, fuck the Vans <laughs> Thrasher shoe. <laughs> fuck anyone who wears that. Downtown kids. People who wear like Vans. Tell them how you really feel. People wear, I can say people who wear Vans old school right now, trash. <laughs> people who wear Thrasher t-shirts right now, trash. I don't want to be. Dude, you just you just talk about like a lot of people around us right now. All right, cool. I'm 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 I'm, I'm upfront about it. A lot of people who aren't involved in skate culture. A lot of people who bought this just because they saw Rihanna or Travis Scott wear it, and it's like, it's like to me, it's like kind of like you're being a bit of a culture vulture. Can I rock Vans? You said you used to skate back in the day. I'm not saying you had to, but you're pictures. an OG. You're an OG. I have so pictures. No, but you're an OG. You, okay. you, you get my respect. I just think it's like, it's so, it's two of the most authentic brands in the space. Yeah. And they're making such a trendy shoe where yeah. it's like, kind of like, it's almost sad that Vans and Thrasher, like two of the most iconic skate brands all time are yeah. just viewed as a trend right now. Yeah, that's the saddest part about this. That is by far the saddest part this about is this. On, I think this is, this is on trend. This has nothing to do with this just being a good collab. That's an amazing point. Five years ago, yeah. this would have been like the most organic collaboration ever. Yeah. Now it's like super on trend. It feels like a shill, yeah. It's really sad. My drop of the week is also very sad, and that is the eggplant Nike Air Foam Posit 1. And the reason that that is sad is because foam posits have fallen off the only cliff. <laughs> <laughs> in the past three years. Are they wearing them in DC still? They, we got to have to call up Wale. Foam posits are easily one of the best basketball sneakers ever created, period. Foam posits had an amazing moment back in 2009 when these first dropped, when we had things like the Galaxy, Foams, Royals. I, you know, I like my stuff kind of. Dr. Doom's even going back further. That's when the foam posit was really dope. Now, no. No more foams, guy. No more. Did you have pink foams back in the day? Why are you disrespecting me on my own show? Anyway, 
the best and worst things that we've seen on the internet this week. Your best wealthy. Uh, my best or my personal favorite, mm -hmm. due to my connection with it, mm -hmm. is uh, wearing them right now. Mm -hmm. oh, zoom in on my feet. It's the it's the 35th anniversary of New Balance's Flimby factory in England. Um, I got to go there yep. uh, a few weeks back and uh, with six of the biggest uh, collectors of the brand. Mm. It was just a really, you know, really special experience for a brand to actually acknowledge the people who are like putting them on. I got you. You know, more than big celebrities and I think the shoes are just really good. Yeah. My best of the week is something that is very close to home because it was produced out of this office and that is, I think we both agree this is amazing. This was amazing. That was uh, Joe LaPuma's sneaker shopping with Neymar. You and I, Welty, are both big fans of football. That's yes. soccer to you, Yankees. Um, Neymar, to me, is a superstar. That's obvious. He is, can be the next superstar soccer player to penetrate American culture. Can yeah. be. Yeah, for sure. Not saying he's going to be. He can be. He has a look. He has the game. He has a swag. He has the people behind him. He has the brands behind him. He spent 18 stacks at Flight Club and he in LA. Cool, and he bought cool stuff. Oh, he bought good sneakers. And he just seemed dope on camera. And personally, since I'm a big uh, soccer fan, I want to see more of this soccer content in America. I think it's nice to do these sort of take breaks. I, I've always felt, me personally, that there's always been this, like, especially with myself, there's always been this stigma of like me not being someone who's super into basketball. Yeah. That like people like kind of would look down upon me within like the sneaker industry because they were in their whole like you had to be into basketball to be cool. Yeah. And now that there's kind of a, a shift where like you, you can be cool again. You can you can be into football and like it, it's it's fine. Yeah. You know, like and I think it's really nice to realize that you can break the mold a little bit. Uh, very quickly, we're gonna get through these two very quickly because we want to bring our guest on. Yeah. My worst of the week is a tricolor Nike Air More Uptempo. This sneaker is an absolute garbage bag. Uh, I can't believe that Nike is doing this to one of the best sneakers of all time. I am thoroughly, uh, thoroughly disgusted by this. Uh, Your worst. My worst was the out of nowhere Air Money Retros. Um, I think it's cool that they gave PEs a little bit to like lesser known, well not lesser known, but well, like not as big as celebrities where it's like, you had like Ninth Wonder and Jesus Amaro. It just seemed like a very weird kind of like rollout for a shoe that nobody was expecting to or come. Or cares about, yeah. Yeah, it was, it, was just, it was just very, it was just very strange. And it's also not the original shoe. Yeah, it's a, it's a mockery of the original shoe. <clears throat> that brings us unceremoniously to our guest, a triple OG in the game who has an amazing, career arc from both a collector's perspective and a business perspective, my man, Michael Vincent. Come on through, my man. Mike, I, I, it was very important for me to have you on this show today, right? Thank you. Myself, Welty, yourself, come from an era of sneakers. Yeah, we're old. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that too. That too. Um, <laughs> that I feel has been underserved from a content standpoint from a story standpoint. I don't think that nowadays we are highlighting people of our era enough, especially people who have a, a, who've had a, a big contribution behind the scenes. And who aren't rappers. For what we're doing and who aren't I'm, rappers. I'm not a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> you got bars? So Michael Vincent, you, first of all, as a collector, your sneaker game is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, it's, when you work for all the companies that I worked for, yeah. it, it comes easy, you know, when, when you work for Bathing Ape, you work for Training Camp, like all these like tier zero type accounts, yeah. it's really easy to amass a, yeah. a big collection. You know, when, when you're working at Bathing Ape, like you had a, an allowance. Okay. So you were given X amount of products every season. So okay. it's really easy to pile that up. And uh, being in the industry, you have a lot of friends who you have very good plugs. So it, yeah. it, it definitely helps. But as I get older like that, that collection is just gonna going down like yeah. you you get to a point in your life when you're like you really don't need that many sneakers okay um when will i hit this point i don't know <laughs> like it's hopefully uh, soon hopefully, hopefully <laughs> soon like, like with, with me it's like i you you get older you get married you you live like in a small apartment yeah. in new york city and you have over a thousand pairs of sneakers yeah and you're paying rent for your sneakers and yeah. you're like it's true is this is this worth, is it? It worth and it? then i enjoy the culture more than i, I don't need to participate fully as far as Got it. Getting every release. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm past that point in my life. And now it's just trying to study it, learn it, and get back to the culture. Dope. 
So your career arc, did it start at Mike or start at training camp? Uh, it started at bathing. It. Well, it actually started in my dorm room. Uh, okay. Uh, my roommate and I were flipping sneakers uh, back and forth. Uh, Asia to US. Okay. Uh, and then that's how I got the job at Bathing Ape since they were actually buying Nikes from us that they couldn't get oh, from other people. Oh, I didn't know that. So you were flipping out of your dorm room yeah, to yeah. Bape. The rest is history, right? Like yeah. it's, it's, I, I tell my parents I'm not going back to med school or nursing school. Wow, um, <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, from that point on, I would look back. I mean, it, it's, it's one of those things that I'm very passionate about, yeah. you know, this, this culture, and um, I, I stuck to it. So. I think within six or seven months, like I, I was working in the floor to, I was buying the stuff for the store. I, I, I go to Japan, I think every season and, and buy products for the store. So yeah, so that, that's kind of like where it, it truly started. And then after that, I, I had a few other projects. And right, whatever. so yeah. I want to detail those very quickly. So Bape, Mike 23, yes. uh, Training Camp, yep. and Jack Threads. Yep. Am I missing anything? That's it. Okay, then, so uh, yeah. I want to qualify those things first. So Mike 23, and we'll talk about it, at the time was a very influential streetwear brand, um, yes, especially it, here in New York. Yeah, it actually started out as a t-shirt that was being sold at clientele. Uh, well, now you're taking us back. This is this is great. <laughs> I'm just saying, no one probably, bro, no one who, 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 knows who clientele is, but you yeah. damn sure should. Yeah, who knows clientele, <laughs> right? So, so that's when I took everything that I learned from Bathing Ape as far as creating the strategy to monetize that those pieces you know creating logo pieces creating the schedule to make sure it's hyped and making sure we're you know like we collect had us in the first season wow nas was wearing our hoodie on the double xl magazine yeah. so like it's it's we, we definitely blew up and then I'm, I'm sure if people that know the brand knows what happened as yeah. far as like the whole season this thing yeah but we we definitely changed how the culture shop right yeah. since back then you weren't wearing like a nike t-shirt to wear with your kicks, yeah. like you were wearing something else. Yeah. So we we created to f something to fill that void. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. then, training camp. Yeah. So right? after Mike, we uh, went to training camp. So let me talk about training camp very quickly because this is a very New York thing. Training camp <laughs> was easily one of the best sneaker retail spots here in New York City. Several doors uh, carried the best product. Rest in peace to training camp. So t take us through what happened at training camp because it was at the top yeah i mean like point. we I, I i'm not sure it was complex or someone else um uh, that ranked us top 50 uh, boutique or stores in, in the world uh so yeah i mean like training camp you know like it's it's the recession hit you know we like those days when you know, someone said uh, earlier someone asked a question about jordan's coming back right and and i think it will come back like like fashion it's a sign it, it's a curve it, you you go through ups and downs like all Nike has to do is like make things limited. Next thing, there we go. And here we go again, yeah. right? It's also kind of funny now how like I I see the current culture like when when they talk about like the 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 OG red Jordan fives and how hyped up it is. Like back then, that that sat that sat in the shelves for like <laughs> right. I, I couldn't sell that thing. Like I had to split the pack <laughs> right, right, to, yeah. to to sell it. So it's it's it's, it's kind of funny how the culture is changing. It, it's it's cool, you know. It's it's. It's how Bathing Ape is having uh, a resurgence yeah, now. So yeah. it's, it's, it's definitely a good thing. It's business, right? It's, it's very expensive to operate a store. We, we rely too much on Nike. Like Nike was about 60 to 70% of our business. So when, once, once they started to slip, what are you going to rely on? Yeah. Like, like back then, like, the only Audi I could sell was probably Superstars or Stan Smith. Yeah. We just couldn't make our sales goals anymore, and it just didn't make sense to keep the stores open. So how does the culture and the fickle nature, really, of the culture and of trends affect a multi-million dollar business like that? Especially now, like, like if, if, if you see the news right now, like, you see retailers closing down every day. Yeah. Uh, and the culture that we, we speak of, they're more aggressive. They, they want something now. They want what's hot now. It's, it's like our culture, right? Like when we would come home with a fresh pair of cakes, oh, that's dope. It was unique. Like I, I, I could go to Dr. J's back then yeah. and get something off the clearance rack, and it'd be dope because you've never yeah. seen that shit, yeah. right? But now it's it's people want to be individuals, but it's like I want to be individual, like my friend. <laughs> right. It's it's more about like social gratification now. So that that's that's kind of changing, right? So yeah. so it's 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 much much tougher since in retail you buy stuff seven months out. So like right now it's August. 
if you're a buyer, you're buying stuff out for spring. Yeah. Anything could happen within the six months. Now, now, now you see trends change every three, four, five months. Yeah. Or Kanye could wear something and overnight all of a sudden that's completely yeah, different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So it's definitely an interesting time for, for retail, right? But it's, it's also kind of cool how reselling is crazier than, than ever. Yeah. Um, big businesses are definitely taking advantage, monetizing the culture. So if you look at like the Vapor Max, right? It's, it's an athletic sneaker. But, if, but think about how they rolled out the sneaker. They had a collaboration, they had lifestyle collaboration. So yeah. they, they used, it's, it's very smart, like they used the culture to eventually push the sneaker into the mass market. Right. So well, that's going backwards from yeah. what, the, what they used to do. Yeah, yeah. So before it was like, hey, like, let, let's launch this, this performance sneaker and then do something culture related to yeah. keep the momentum going. So now it's, now it's coinciding. So like you, you have people who, shouldn't be in the game or in the game like like athleisure like, like that that word is just so funny either right yeah. like you you have people who who are now making making track pants yeah who shouldn't be in the track pant business <laughs> right. but they're just jumping on it right, right? right, right. so yeah. it's it's impacting every aspect of of business from marketing a to, lot more than it used to you know, when, yeah, you, yeah. when you started yeah, yeah yeah so you 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 actually have to be smarter it's when, when that, now when you buy something all right how are we going to market this what's what's the social strategy what's now <laughs> so you went from uh, training camp, vape, mm-hmm. my 23 to Jack Threads. That was your last stop. Yeah, that's my last stop. And, and when I went to Jack Threads, people were like, why are you doing that? Like, it's, it's, you've done all these things. It's completely the opposite. And m- my goal is to keep growing. You sure. know, like it's, it's, you, can't, you can't stay in one place forever. E-commerce is the future. So I wanted to get into an e-commerce structure, uh, an e-commerce business. So I went there, they gave me a chance and helped them grow the business. So unfortunately, the company, uh, us, we didn't make hard decisions. So the company is now out of business. But luckily, um, some of my friends bought it back and they're gonna be back in business uh, next month. It's not easy. You need to be very, very prepared. Like you need a, you just can't open a store. Yeah. Is there a common thread that you think that exists between these companies that ascended to the top and then fell out? Why? Things, things go wrong when you go outside the DNA of your brand and you get greedy. Greedy. It's okay to be a $50 million brand every year than trying to raise your plan and be a $100 million. Don't chase the numbers. Like, do what you love to do. Do you think you see that with, speaking of, that's coming up, do you see that with uh, Jordan brand right now? Because remember, they they were uh, significantly saying we're going to reach, what was it, 20? 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 billion by yeah, 2020. 20 billion. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. they, you know, they went away from making things limited and making people want it to all of a sudden trying to be a mess. Yeah, I, I, I do see that. I mean, like, it's, it's I mean, I, I know a lot of people there also, and they're, and they're, they're trying their best to, to make things happen. But trends also change, right? Let's just say sneakers or, or basketball sneakers were still trending. They'd still be killing it. But who, who knew that joggers were going to be so big? Yeah. Like tape repenting would be so big. Yeah. I grew up in that era, but it's not enough for me to go, I'm going to buy that. Gotcha. You know, like 220 for a Bobby Flo to get her at sixes, it's, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. I can afford it, but. Do you I want to? Do, do I want to? Yeah. Do you actually want to wear it at this point in your yeah. life? At, at this point, I'm like, I'm gonna buy sneakers that I know I'm gonna wear more than once. Like, I have so many sneakers at home that like, mm-hmm. I, I don't even know if I wore it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, 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 it's kind of wasteful at, at a point. Sure. So, so there are probably a lot of consumers like us who, I, I like the sneaker, it, there's an emotional connection, but I'm just not gonna buy it since I'm not gonna wear it as much. Last question, you are, as, as a, a, from a business perspective, have always been, I don't want to say forced, but have, have always been, um, by, by nature of the business you're in, forced to live in the future, right? Yes. You're, you're buying buying against yeah. the future. You have to see into the future and everything like that. So well, from your ahead. perspective, yeah. where do you see sneaker culture in the future? Let's say in the next five years, where, where are we going? I well, think. The qu- Why are you laughing? It's a good no, question. No, no, I'm not laughing. I'm just trying to imagine it. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> laugh. well, like, you're, you're laughing. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of trying. What, what, what popped into your head? <laughs> I'm like, are we like flying? You don't want to know what popped yeah, into yeah, like, these heads. See, as a person who has been forced to live in the future throughout your career, where, where are we going? Well, in five I, years? I would like to see brands continue to innovate. Okay. You know, like, like a lot of the shoes that you and I love, everyone love, those were the biggest innovations at that time, right? Like. You love those sneakers. Yep. 2012, that was like the yeah. 
that was it. Yeah. Like Jordan ones, like these were the thing back then. Yeah. And for the culture to grow, for this, for everything to grow, you need to continue to innovate. That that's what I want to see. Like like it's it's I love retros, but I want to see something that can be retro twenty years from now. Like that's the only way. Like we're all gonna get better. Yep. And that's the only way we're gonna keep getting dope stuff. Yeah. Like you can't keep coloring up the same shoe forever. Like we now live in a world where what matters most is how many likes you get on your IG, right? It's like crazy. like like you you buy stuff for that. Preach. Not for you. Preach. Some so, people sell it too after they wear it once. Yeah. That's so so we need to get away from that and really push yourself to be an individual. I mean like that that that's why like all those great stores, I mean like like the kid, like Kith. They're, they're killing it because they're, they're doing whatever they want to do. What and they want to do. What they want to do, and yeah. it's working. Like all those great stores, Undefeated, Union, they had their own vision that's unique. Yeah. What, what's, what's happening right now, it's, it's a lot of copy and paste. And you're not going to grow with that. So, yeah. so hope, I mean, like, I, I hope that like, the NMD and the Ultra Boost are that shoe. I mean, like the Ultra Boost, it's just a great shoe. Like it, it's, it. it's, it's one of those shoes where the whole family can wear it, right? Like, like, the cool kid in the, in, the, in the house can wear it, and your grandfather can wear it, and it's still like dope. Yeah. So, they might still be making it at that point. I mean, like, they may have like, Ultra Boost 10.0 at that point. <laughs> 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 but I, I, I just want the culture to continue to push the envelope and really create new stuff. Like, yeah. that's the only way, like, things will, will evolve. Like, yeah. we can't live in the, respect the past, definitely, but keep moving. Yeah, you can't live in forever. Yeah, yeah. My man, Michael, thank you for coming on today. No problem, uh, thank you. Again, like I feel like you have a, such a, a different perspective and for our viewer, you know, blessing them with that knowledge is invaluable. Anytime, I hope they, they learned something today. Matt, before we get out of here, this was your maybe one and only time to shine here in Fools. Maybe. Wow. Man, I'm just saying wow. maybe. <laughs> live, live, live ratings. <laughs> Live feedback. Tell, tell the people something about uh, about the show or whatever you want. Some no, parting it's, words. It's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, this was really dope. I made one appearance on it beforehand. Very <laughs> that's short. That's right. But no, it's, it's, it's nice that we can come out here and talk about these stories because it's always such... Everyone's just focused on what's happening with this, this, this without actually stepping back and, yeah. and talking about what's going on. In the, in the sneaker world, you yeah. know, and as, as the years go on, you know, this becomes more of a legitimate that there needs to be stories told about it. They're not just what you have on your feet. There's Absolutely. People, this is their whole life, and I like being able to relate that, you know. Very powerful words from Matt Welty. Yeah. I'm Rich Mays Lopez. This is Matt Welty. Till next time, y'all. Peace. What up, everyone? I'm Rich Mays Lopez. And I'm Brendan Dunn from Soul Collector, asking you to please subscribe to our YouTube page. Why would anyone want to subscribe to Soul Collector's YouTube page? Listen, listen, man. We have hot takes. Okay. We have sneaker release day info. Okay. We have release roundup. Okay. I like to think we have it all. We do have it we, all. We got to get this page popping. Do we have any info on Big Baller Brand? Always. Sold. Subscribe to Soul Collector on YouTube.